the stunning Golden Gate Bridge and the city, as the locals refer to it in the background, famous for its cable cars and legendary on the north side of the bay for the vineyards in Sonoma. There, too, is Infineon Raceway, where the Pirelli World Challenge Championships come for rounds 9 and 10. Long and Sophronis will duke it out in GT. Brown and Foss in GTS. And in touring car, Aschenbach and Povoledo. It is next. World Challenge is underway. Keep, keep, keep on the brakes. are still side by we side. We may be going for second. Only class racing at World Challenge is oh, back. Coming up Welcome to the Cadillac World Challenge Grand Prix of Sonoma in rounds 9 and 10 of the Pirelli World Challenge. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Creamer, and welcome to beautiful California. You know, it's been five years since this series has raced at Infineon Raceway. Raced here before, but the fact that we haven't been here in five years means there's a number of drivers who've never raced here, certainly never in the Pirelli World Challenge Championships, and those that may have raced here have certainly never raced with the incredible grip of the Pirelli P0 Slicks at this incredible facility. You combine those factors with the fact that we've got three very close points battles in the three classes that now comprise the Pirelli World Challenge, we're in from intense and predictable racing from the get-go. As always, my partner in the booth is Calvin Fish, and Cal, there is a field of 38 cars on their way right now to fill out these yellow starting spots on this grid here, the front straight at Infineon Raceway. Should be fun. Thanks, Greg. Looks like perfect race conditions right now as we see the official World Challenge pace car, the VW 2012 version of the Golf R. Heavily upgraded package. Looks like that would be a blast to drive. On board now with P.D. Cunningham, looking for his first victory of the year, but sits on the pole here today in GTS as the rest of the field comes around to the starting grid. Now, this is a new and heavily altered version of Infineon Raceway as we have 38 cars going to make the start here today. So for some... This will be a new test in race conditions. There we see our GT championship leader, Pat Long, looking very calm, cool, and collected, but he has the championship lead right now, and he'd certainly like to consolidate that with a double header here this weekend. Now, the Cadillacs have really been showing a lot of form of late, and today they claim their very first pole position since 2007. Earlier, Greg caught up with our pole sitter as many miles right here at Infineon Raceway. Really uh, proud of everybody at Cadillac. You know, the car, as everybody knows, has been uh, improving every weekend. And, uh, you know, great to get it here at, uh, at Sears Point. You know, this is my old stopping grounds. I, I really don't think there, there are many guys that have more laps around this place than I do. So uh, the biggest challenge we all face is the traffic. You know, the, the difference between us and the touring cars is dramatic, way more than what the American Le Mans series deals with, the, the speed differential. So, you know, you've got to be patient in traffic. And, you know, that is where, if you're the guy following, that you tend to want to be aggressive. Quick look at the GT point standings. After qualifying, Pat Long extends his lead over Sophronis, and with the 15 points for pole, Johnny O'Connor leapfrog scheme for third, and Pilgrim rounds out the top five. Now in GTS, our defending champion, P.D. Cunningham, claims his 44th career pole. The Acura obviously loves this new track configuration. Nice pole, second one of the season. Yeah, you bet. We haven't been here to uh, Sears Point in quite some time, but definitely the twisty nature of this track, even with this new configuration, uh, is really good for the Acura. So we'll see what happens today. The uh, rear drive cars may get us at the start, but it'll be our job to try to hang in there and uh, keep the pressure on them and try to get back by at some point before the end. Well, Cadillac will lead this field to green with Johnny O'Connell on the pole, and his teammate Andy Pilgrim lines up fourth. He knows this track like the back of his hand, but not this version, so great opportunity to sit on board as Andy talks us through the Cadillac CTS-V key corners to this racetrack. Coming into turn one, fourth to fifth gear for the Cadillac, up a very steep hill, left-hand turn, hard on the brakes here, down to third gear, turn two, right-hander, up and over the hill, kind of a vertical corner there, Hard on third gear, hold it in third all the way down here. Hard left, compress into the hill. Quick transition, up and over, vertical corner again. You kids totally blind here. Coming down into turn four. Flat out now up the rest of the drag strip. Cool down area into fifth gear. Hard as we can on the brakes coming into turn seven. Double apex, turn seven, right hander. This is where the NASCAR guys go. This is their turn right here. Come out, turn seven. Hard, hard, hard braking down here for turn nine. Very sharp. And nine A, right left hander. Now we're coming into the old turn 10 from the old Sears Point. Awesome corner. Today, it's just flat for us. And then we come into what I'm calling the safety pin, which is turn 11. And then we do a very hard, probably 43 mile an hour right hander onto the front straightaway, back onto the straightaway, coming up to the start and finish, up in the fourth, and then up in the fifth, and across the line. 
And that's your Cadillac CTSV Key Corners. Wow, that is an awesome racetrack. Greg has joined me back in the booth for the race call. It is an absolutely awesome racetrack. And speaking of which, at the Cadillac Grand Prix, let's go to Jim Verpilat. On behalf of our friends at Optima Batteries and all the Cadillac employees and dealers worldwide, welcome to the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma. Drivers, start your engines! And this great 38-car field comes to life on an absolutely picture postcard perfect day here at Infineon Raceway. And Cal, interesting configuration for the start. The latter half of the field is going to have to deal with a curve on a standing start. Yeah, we see the touring car division at the back of the field. They're going to have to go through that little kink before they get to the straightaway and uh, then get up the hill. It's going to be interesting. Let's take a look at the starting grid for this ninth round of the championship on pole. Johnny O'Connell in the Cadillac. Points leader Pat Long in the Privacy Star 2-speed Porsche alongside. In row number two, a great qualifying effort by Randy Popes in the K-Pax Volvo. Hopefully they've got their gremlin salt and Andy Pilgrim in the team Cadillac. We go to row number three where you're going to have Tommy Dreesey in the Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwreck movie and Mike Skeen in the Krager Wheels Corvette. In row number four, James Sofronis, the Global Motorsports Group Porsche, not where he wanted to be with his points battle, and Pat Lindsay, the Hawk Performance Corvette. Then we go to row five, Alex Figgy in the team K-Pax Volvo and Dino Gressentini back in the championship in the Stop Tech Porsche. Returning to World Challenge in row six, Dave Welch in the Ferrari 430 with numeric sponsorship and Tony Gaples in the Black Dog Corvette. Row seven, Rob Morgan in the Entrust Merrill Lynch Porsche and Jeff Courtney in the Global Motorsports Group Porsche with Ken Tire Rexstep.com sponsorship. Steven Ruiz, the young rookie in the Global Motorsports Group Porsche in row eight and completing our GT field, Jason Carter. Our GTS Paul Sitter, P.D. Cunningham, starts row 9 alongside a locally based driver, Greg Leofuge, on debut in World Challenge. On row 10, championship leader, Paul Brown, coming off three consecutive wins, and he'll sit alongside Eric Foss, closest challenger to him. On row 11, the American Muscle Cars, led by two youngsters, Ben Crosland and Alec Udell in the Momentum Camaro. On row 12, the very consistent Brad Adams starts alongside Tony Rivera, debut run in GTS with the Nissan 370Z. On row 13, Nick Asayan in the second of the real-time Acuras, alongside Artie Topi in the second of the Momentum Camaros. Rounding out the GTS field, Scott Kuhn in his second run of the season. And sharing row 14 with him, Polsen and points leader in touring cars, Lawson Aschenbach in the Cubs 360 Honda, Aaron Povaleto and Tristan Herbert in the Capex Volvo and Rimtech Motorsports VW in row 15. Row 16, Patrick Sagan in the Segs Motorsports, the Bears Holmes Honda and Brett Sandberg in the Cubs 360 Honda. Then in row 17, Ron Zitza in the Gila Monster Zots Racing VW and Ray Mason in another Compass 360 Honda. In row 18, Rob Holland in the second of the Capex Mobile C30s. And it's great to have Charlie Solomon back driving with Brandon Peterson this weekend in his Dr. Natasha car. Then Tom Ellen in a Honda from Compass 360. And Carolyn Quila completes that field in her Gila Monster Racing VW Jetta. And they are in on their installation lap and warm-up lap and I earlier had a chance to check in with Lawson Aschenbach in turn. It's an unbelievable place. I mean anytime you can come out to Sonoma it's it's awesome. I mean the, the view, the fans, uh, it's just it's a great place to be but you know it's it's gonna be a little bit different being in the back especially with some of the GTS cars because we're actually a little bit quicker than some of the guys in GTS because you know, obviously touring cars here with all the turns we have a little bit of an advantage everywhere, so sometimes we might be running up on some of them during the race, which could cause a little bit of the problem if we're trying to race for a win and you got some guys behind us, for instance, that have quite a bit of straight line speed. So uh, we have to be careful, obviously, but uh, you know, it's an exciting track. It's going to be an exciting race for the fans, and, and we're happy to be here. And he is enjoying his time in touring cars after having won the GT Championship back in 2006 and doing a great job. All right, looks like the field now is coming around and about to complete get everybody stopped in their spots look on board pd cunningham ready to go after it here and here is our nissan leaf safety car it is a zero emission all electric vehicle and uh, you can see dick lubatina on board just in case there's an incident on the start it chases the field for rapid response now cal let's take a look at the race keeper quad box well we always see some great action from these views top of the screen we see two of our gts runners brad adams and alec udell bottom right tommy drees a great qualifying run in p5 Alongside he on the screen, you'll see Rob Morgan in another of the True Speed Porsches. 
And we always get some great onboard looks. Looking forward to this, courtesy of Race Keeper. Now it is time to go. There's Kathy Malik, five second board. She will exit stage right. Remember, when the wheel and lights go out, we go racing. There they are. They're on. Watch for it. Round nine, the Pirelli World Challenge about to get underway. We're green. Oh, and Randy Post, Calvin, an amazing start, as always, in those all-wheel drive ovals. Yeah, he threaded the needle there perfectly between Pat Long and our pole sitter, Johnny O'Connell. Now the race is on for second. Long takes it away from O'Connell. He drops from first down to third on these opening two corners. Boy, and Tommy Dreesy, a great start as well. Slots right into fifth, holds on, going back in the pack. P.D. Cunningham, he got swamped as well. Both of the points leaders in GTS able to get by, Brown and Foss. Yeah, those Mustangs showing their power there. Look at this. Jimmy Safrona's looking for a way by. He's followed by Mike Skeen. And look at that Ferrari, that beautifully balanced 430, just working that outside line as we look at Pat Lindsay in the Hawk Performance Entry, taking a run at Alex Figgy as they drop into one of the key corners here, the carousel. Yeah, and they're just trying to get these Pirellis up to temperature right now. Perfect race conditions, nice track temp right now. Very cool in qualifying this morning, so these guys should get up to speed and get those tire pressures and temps up pretty quickly. Popes leads down into the sort of a double apex hairpin here, but it's an interesting corner. And look at Figgy trying to work around Lindsay as well. Randy Popes, the K-Pack car, haven't seen him lead much this year. Great to see for the four-time champ. Yeah, he's had a very frustrating season, so hopefully he can get one together here today. But look at Johnny O'Connell. He's starting to harass Pat Long. He realized he's got a very balanced race car in that Cadillac here this weekend. He needs to take advantage. Whoa, and look at Lindsay yes. trying to get down underneath. I don't know if he was able to get that done. Meanwhile, here's GTS and Eric Foss in that smaller displacement, 4.6 liter V8, gets ahead of Petey Cunningham. Petey getting back around Paul Brown, who's tucked in behind. So Foss in that St. Jude's Traxxas entry getting around Cunningham and Brown at this point. Nicely done. And Cal, here's that very short hairpin. Used to go a lot further down into that corner. They shortened it up. And I think it's really a great safety measure because before, if you did lose your brakes there, you had no runoff room whatsoever. Here we see Jeff Courtney recovering from a poor start in GT as he threads his way through the GTS leaders. So Foss lead from PD Cunningham. And let's take a look at our Optima Battery's best standing start, and it goes to your leader in GTS. Here's how we got there. Four spots he makes up. Look at this run, Cal. Obviously a GT Porsche blocked everybody, and that worked for Foss. That was a beautiful run. You saw Jeff Courtney there kind of almost stalled on the grid, but he got around our pole sitter, P.D. Cunningham, and he has a narrow lead right now as Paul Brown starts to put the pressure on as well. Yeah, he's in a Mustang sandwich, P.D. Cunningham is right now, but boy, did he get a run out of the carousel. He is tucked right up on Foss. Now, this is where the horsepower should be an advantage, but P.D. got a great run. He's deep on the brakes. Can he get it done down to the inside? Oh. Foss says no, but P.D. still got the nose, and I think Foss settled that at that point. Let's go back and take a look at what's unfolding in Turing Car and Lawson Aschenbach, the pole sitter, in front of Aaron Povaledo. And Aschenbach, by the way, stopped Povaledo's pole run at four. He had four straight and was looking to be one of the very few in World Challenge history to get five. And Aschenbach, who said, boy, this Compass 360 Honda loves this layout here at this track, is taking every advantage. And let's take a look at our leaderboards. Top four in GT, Popes Long, O'Connell, and Pilgrim. In GTS, Foss, Brown, Cunningham, and Udell. And in Turing Car, Aschenbach, Povaledo, Herbert, and Sagan. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships are brought to you by Privacy Star, the only complete privacy and preference service available for smartphones. By the Cadillac V Series, the 556 horsepower CTS V Coupe sedan and wagon, the world's fastest family of cars. And by Invisible Glass, America's number one selling automotive glass cleaner. Back to the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma at Infineon Raceway, ninth round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships. And we've got a problem. We are under a full course caution, and here's why. Aaron Povaleto, you can see the frustration, comes in here second in the points, Cal. Really a player for this championship. This is a killer. It really is. Rounds are running out for this young man to overtake Lawson in the championship. He had a strong car here today, running second. Would like to have got the win. Now he's going to score zero points, and that is a deathly blow to his championship hopes. So tough, tough day here for Aaron Povaleto, and you can see we uh, hop on board here with Christian Herbert, who is the guy who's going to benefit. As he comes up, you can see Povaleto suddenly slow. Okay? Yeah, just pulls it off to the side of the road, so some kind of mechanical, and uh, that'll be very frustrating. He's shown a lot of speed here this weekend and potentially could have had a win today. And take a look who just before the caution got to the top, and that was Pat Long. That's an interesting story. And here's a moment for Randy Pope. Everything going along well. He's leading. And look at suddenly you can see his hand comes up. He's got a problem. He's pointing people by. 
And he, too, boy, a tough moment for the Volvo team, the K-Pax entries. He's gone down through the gearbox where everything is working drivetrain-wise, but zero power. He's brought into the pits. The team are looking it over, but doesn't look like a quick fix. And his frustrating season just continues, Greg. Just amazing how you can have a championship run, and then another year, everything goes wrong. Completely wrong. Now, here is Tony Rivera. Speaking of things going wrong and making things go right they tried to develop that amazing nissan gtr as a gt car and as amazing a street car as it is it really didn't work into that category so what they did they refocused to the nissan 370 and said now this is a gts challenger and here's a little bit more on this great story hi i'm rod stukenberg senior manager of motorsports for nissan north america we're here today with Tony Rivera, driver of the Brass Monkey Nismo 370Z. Tony, can you tell us a little bit about this 370Z? Yeah, it's basically a stock Nismo 370Z that you buy at your local dealership. Um, it's got Nissan Motorsports Limited Slip Differential, uh, Nissan Motorsports Springs, completely stock drivetrain, untouched, uh, all the way down to the stock Nissan brakes. Thanks, Tony. I'm excited to introduce you to the official safety car of the Pirelli World Challenge, the Nissan Leaf. The first thing you're going to notice about the Nissan LEAF is the fact that it has no tailpipe. In fact, it has no emissions and uses no gas. The Nissan LEAF is the first production-built U.S. vehicle that's all electric. And that means that this vehicle can run approximately 100 miles on a full charge and reach up to 90 miles an hour as it goes down the highway. Now, the motor that's in this thing is 107 horsepower and it has 207 foot-pounds of torque. And you may say, well, what's significant about that? Well, you have to remember that on electric vehicles, the torque is instant. But the vehicle has more than that, more than power, and, and, and more than no emissions. It actually was built to go down the road in a streamlined manner. From the front headlights to the battery tray underneath the car, it all contributes to the smooth rolling of this car down the highway. Another interesting fact about this car is, is that a majority of the interior is made from recycled plastic bottles, and in fact, much of the car is recyclable in and of itself. I would encourage you to stop by your local Nissan dealer and test drive one of these. If you do, you'll be impressed. Well, you know, there's a huge focus these days on things green in the automotive industry in general, and clearly Nissan is taking a lead role in that, and I think that is very responsible and uh, very forward-thinking. So congratulations to Nissan, and how nice to have Tony Rivera back. Such a great talent, uh, had those wins in those GT Porsches, and to have him back in a car that will be very competitive in this class is great. Uh, he certainly is a great talent, and there's the double caution, but that's going to go away. We are expecting a restart. Pat Long now leads them up. Watch for the green flag, and it flies. We are back to racing, and a big move there by the yellow Prager Wheels Corvette of Ski trying to duck underneath and pick the spot up from Andy Pilgrim. Kelly couldn't quite get that done. No, not enough room there before they jink to the left there, so Andy was able to close that door, but you know that Johnny O'Connell, our original pole sitter here, wants by Pat Long, our current leader, but the Porsche looks awfully tough. He's carrying a lot of rewards away, so that'll be a factor throughout the course of this race. Well, Pat's made the comment as we take a look on board with Lawson Aschenbach, your leader in touring car. Pat made the comment that this is a track that that Porsche with this layout should be effective on. The final two of the season are not Porsche tracks. He said, we've got to maximize what we can, but he's doing it with a lot of weight. He really is. We are on board there with Lawson Aschenbach as we see Rivera now looking for a way through that touring car traffic. But Aschenbach continues to lead. Now it's Herbert in second. Well, that's a big thing with Povaleto's issue, of course. Right now, Aschenbach knows he's going to make up a lot of ground in the points, so he's got that confidence he can deal with. But Christian Herbert is very, very fast. Now, we're going to take a look as we watch Aschenbach in that beautiful white Cubs 360 entry. Look at this. That is young Alec Udell coming up, trying to get around Eric Foss. That is the battle for third now in the uh, GTS category as Paul Brown has gone to the front, and here's how he did it. Look at this move. Brown down underneath Petey Cunningham picks up the second spot that was on lap two and then he was able to run down and get around eric foss so this battle in gts it's been this way all season long but alec udell this young 15 year old phenom really doing a nice job at ken Kel. he's doing a great job we certainly saw those big muscle cars peg back a little bit at mid ohio so pd and the acuras are a little bit quicker but yeah you could see paul brand just used the power there coming out of turn 10 down into the hairpin turn got alongside nothing pd can do at that point in time 
And a guy we really haven't talked a lot about, that all-white car, its debut weekend here in the Red Line Oil Mustang, is uh, young Mr. Lea Foge, who is doing a superb job, based here in Sonoma, now originally from Europe, and has uh, been very impressive. Speaking of impressive, Johnny O'Connell is in hunt mode. He is really trying to get around Pat Log right now. Interesting uh, combination. The uh, Whoops, and a yellow flying. So even if O'Connell got the run, couldn't do anything with it. You see there, Pat ducked to the inside. There's a little bit of debris there in the middle of the racetrack. So Pat certainly didn't want to cut it down a tire there. Back to the GTS paddle. Look at this. Oh, fast. Just literally rams the 06 car of Udell. Yeah, he clouded him very firmly right there. He's got damage to the front end of that car as well. So uh, Udell able to continue. The question is, what happened to the back of that car? And you can he see the lane. Uh, yep, I was going to say. some kind of issue. <laughs> One is probably visibility with that hood crunched up. Let's take another look at it. On board with Eric Foss. Down into that chicane. Just, wow, I wonder if he lost his brakes, Greg, because he got in there really deep. That's not a move or a mistake you'd expect from Eric Foss. Maybe he's experienced some brake issues there. They can see him weaving around there. I think he may have. Uh, this is Eric's first time here, but he certainly he was very quick. He knows the track now after all that practice and qualifying. It's the battle wow. for the lead. <laughs> Petey is coming unleashed right now. His handling is superb with that anchor. He's going to go and try and go around the long way. Can he cut underneath here? That's Paul Brown there coming off at turn seven. And you'd have to think the tires would stay underneath Petey Cunningham a little bit better on this type of racetrack. He's got a lot of experience. And he's looking for that first win of 2011. This is your classic horsepower versus handling battle you're seeing right here on a track that would reward the latter usually. It certainly didn't qualify. We'll see. And I think at this point, PD would just want to pressure, pressure, pressure and try and get Brown to have to run those tires and brakes off that heavier, more powerful Mustang. Exactly. See more debris there on the exit of turn 10. So there's been a little bit of carnage during the course of these first 11 laps. See a slightly Whoa. different line there. There you see Brown, rear tires really uh, being used hard with the power of that Mustang coming off the hairpin turn. Taking a pasting. <laughs> and Leia Foge now, look at that. He has moved up with that Foss Udell moment. Leia Foge doing a nice job. Is slotted into the third spot right now. So doing a nice job. We go back to Turing Car, and you can see Povaleto. Uh, with that absence of Povaleto, Aschenbach now is easing away from the rest of the field. What so a doing a that nice was, job Greg, right I mean, now. Yeah. Senior nearest competitor in the championship sitting to the side of the road, and you have the lead. This is going to be a big, big day for Lawson Aschenbach. Oh, and traffic now long, able to get by Carolyn Quila, doing a nice job. She saw that blue flag and just eased off to the side. O'Connell trying to hound long, not able to get it done at this point of the track either. That's that new section, one of the new layout parts of the track that uh, eliminates the fast swooping entry into turn number 10. And so O'Connell not able to take advantage at this point. Pilgrim third there and Skeen in that Krager Corvette is coming along as well. And look at the different lines by Long and O'Connell as they come onto the front straight as Udell hits pit lane. Here's your leader in GT, Pat Long. In GTS, it's still Paul Brown, but he's under contest. And Aschenbach comfortable in turning car. An intriguing ninth round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships continues here at the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma at Infineon Raceway. Pat Long able to stretch his advantage a little bit now over Johnny O'Connell, obviously catching traffic at the right time, and Pat Long uh, is awfully good in traffic. Not that O'Connell's not, but Long is just working it beautifully. Coming up now on the GTS machine of Nick Asayan, uh, teammate to Petey Cunningham in that real-time program, and an amazing story really evolving with Nick Asayan. You know, since 2004... He has been an ardent supporter of the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. And at this event, he has taken it one step further because of a horrific incident in Afghanistan just a couple of weeks ago when 30 U.S. servicemen were killed when their Chinook helicopter crashed. And what they did, that was the group, the Night Stalkers. There are the names of all of the soldiers that passed in that. And what Nick Asayan did, along with the Brimtech team, which fields Tristan Herbert, the president, Paul Tilton, they created it a special graphic that is being carried by all of the cars this weekend to honor those 30 servicemen. It was the largest single uh, incidence of fatality by American soldiers since the Afghan war started. So a huge moment, and hats off to Nick Hassan and Mr. Tilton for doing what they're doing. Getting back to the racing at this point, you can see Petey Cunningham has reeled Paul Brown in, and some of that being traffic at this point as well. It's not exactly hurting Petey's charge right now, Cal. 
No, it isn't. He's certainly got a car that looks really balanced right now, and uh, the car tires seem to have stayed underneath him. Paul Brown, however, how much has he used up the rear tires on that Mustang? PD just keeps hounding him. Down this little straightaway here, looks like the Mustang still has a little bit more muscle. As you can see, he stretches it, but through the twisty section, that Acura is really working well. Yeah, with Petey hounding him, he's definitely, Brown has has had to play a game of pitch and catch with those rear tires, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really uh, just trying to feel the traffic. You can kind of not run up on the traffic. You don't want to be balked by them. You've got to really time your run through some of this tight, twisty stuff so you don't lose a lot of momentum coming through the corners. There was a good look at Leia Foge doing a nice job in that red line entry. And then there is Ben Crosland as uh, he sits in the fourth spot in that yellow inner bank Ford Mustang. You know, if you're big into tweeting, well, you can join the World Challenge Twitter account at twitter.com slash WCRacing, and you can receive instant updates on race weekends from the series. So check it out. If you're big into tweets, you've got an option. Meanwhile, Pat Long working his way through that traffic as we talked about, and the thing that's helping him now, Cal, is the fact he's got that little bit of room back to O'Connell. He doesn't have to be, you know, quite as, uh, well, reckless sometimes you have to be when you're under pressure. Speaking of reckless, Whoa! look at this! Oh, Paul Brown, a huge moment there coming up at turn seven. Nearly spins the car around. We talk about his car control. He needed it all and more there to keep that car underneath him, but Petey Cunningham is through for the lead in GTS. And Brown still struggling off track again, and that is a Allowed both Leia Foge with that gray hood and Ben Crosland to come around the outside or at least make the attempt. And you can see in the background, James Safron is spinning it. So he gathers it up, but his oh, tough that weekend. was tight. Wow, particularly for Safronis in terms of points. He too in a close battle with Long. And that is not what he wanted to have happen. But back up front in this GTS battle, now you've got Mike Skeen in the Krager wheels vent trying to duck underneath. Leia Foge in that white red line oil entry trying to keep the inner bank Mustang, that yellow one of Croslin behind him while the GT leaders come through. This is, folks, why we call this sports car wars. It is exactly that. On board with Leia Foge doing a great job. His debut race in World Challenge qualified well, solidly in a podium spot right now, Cal. He's doing a great job. This is his local racetrack. He now lives nearby in Sonoma. So he's got a lot of miles around this racetrack, but nonetheless, to come into this form of competition and compete so well on your debut weekend, an amazing run for him. So Petey Cunningham has the lead. Can he hang on for that first win of 2011? Had six wins last year on the way to the championship. You see Mike Steen threading his way through three different classes running together at very different speeds, Greg, on this racetrack. Well, you heard Johnny O'Connell say that earlier, and the closing rates much more than they are in the American Le Mans series even. So they're dealing with a lot out there. And Petey Cunningham, with Brown getting all crossed up, he's got that little bit of a breather right now and a nice job. And for Leia Foge, aside from his obvious great talent, he has a secret weapon in his quiver right there. It's a guy named Steve Cameron, who's a setup guru extraordinaire who's doing the engineering on that car, so you know that that's working right now as well. He's and, been uh, based here <laughs> in California for many years, so he knows this racetrack like the back of his hand. So he's not only a great engineer, a great driver coach as well, and has time in one of these Mustangs himself. Oh, Crosland a little bit crossed up as he's trying to get himself up onto the podium with GT traffic coming through. Good stuff. Long O'Connell, Skeen, and Pilgrim now your top four in GT. Cunningham, Brown, Leia Foge, and Crosland in GTS. And in touring cars, points leader Aschenbach over Herbert, Sagat, and Sandberg. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships are brought to you by Nissan, innovation for all. By Racekeeper, one of the world's most capable and trusted providers of video data loggers. And by Optima Batteries, with twice the life and 15 times the vibration resistance, they really are the ultimate power source. We are back at the ninth round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships, the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma, where Pat Long continues to lead and has stretched that margin out relatively comfortably getting reports from pit lane that johnny o'connell has that cadillac has gone a bit loose on him right now and pat long even with all that rewards weight really liking the layout of this track and it is paying off big time this is exactly what he wanted to do having missed a round in the championship as well this was huge it was huge and that Porsche got 50 pounds of weight taken away from it across the board this weekend but he does have a lot of rewards weight but here we see the Ferrari, the 430 on debut in World Challenge, Greg, and Walsh is doing a superb job as we're on board with him. 
right now. He really has. In 09, he ran a couple of races with the Woodhouse Performance Group and the Viper, so he's got a little bit of World Challenge experience, but the guy who's running that program, Burl Smith, actually with Dave Welsh in 1997 in those two years of the North American Touring Car Championship, ran a Ford Mondeo, and he ended up winning uh, the Touring Car Driver of the Year Award that year. So it's nice to have Mr. Welch back in competition. And he's got a guy named Greg Fordall that's uh, working on that car. So uh, there's another great secret weapon to have. But, you know, when you want a secret weapon, if you own a Porsche, you want a guy named Long driving it. Yeah, I mean, man, he is totally on top of his game here in World Challenge. Hasn't had the best of years in the ALMS, but uh, he says it's nice to come over here, have some wins. Obviously had that double win at the beginning of the year, and today he looks almost unbeatable. But I think the only thing that can trip him up now is a caution because he has a healthy, healthy lead over Johnny O'Connell, who has lost the rear grip a little bit in the caddy. By the way, another update just to fill you in. We got a report from Pit Lane, Randy Popes. His issues were electrical. Have not heard yet what Park Povoleto at this stage, however. There's the margin. You just saw the silver caddy of Johnny O'Connell back in the distance. And notice who's third as Mike Skeen has gone around Andy Pilgrim and brought that Krager Wheels Corvette onto a potential podium. And he's in a points battle as well. Speaking of points battles, Lawson Aschenbach, like Long right now, uh, has a little bit of space. And boy, did he get a gift with Povoleto's issue. He really did. And that really takes the pressure off, allows you to hit your marks. And here we see our GTS leader, Petey Cunningham. I think even all of the experience, the wins, the championships that he has, I mean, he'll be a little bit nervous right now with two laps to go. Hasn't been the easiest of years for P.D. Cunningham. Remember that huge crash he had in the first race at Mid-Ohio, just in the last event. Big damage to that race car, so the boys have done a tremendous job at real time in getting that car back together and making it quick again. Yeah, and for a six-time champ not to have a win this late in the season, this is new territory to be sure. So he's, I think you're right on the nervous part. Pat Long on his final lap. So he is going to wrap this one up if he can uh, have it all hang together just for another two-thirds of this race in that Privacy Star Entrust Porsche from the Rob and Charles Morgan True Speed team. By the way, very socially conscious is the Pirelli World Challenge, and here's how you can get involved. You can start with world-challenge.com where you can get all the latest news and views on the Pirelli World Challenge. If you'd like a little bit more with some video content, try world-challengetv.com. Check out cool in-car videos, driver interviews. And you can watch this complete race and all the other World Challenge races online right there. And finally, you bet. If you're into Facebook, well, the Facebook group, all I have to do is search World Challenge GT, GTS, and Touring Car Series. Interact with other World Challenge fans and post your race pictures and videos. So have some fun with the social media here with the Pirelli World Challenge. Again, Pat Long weaving his way through the infamous S's, this long snaking section of track. But now coming up to where they have changed it a little bit, normally it peels off to the right there, and then you get that very fast entry into turn 10. But there's a big wall that looms on the exit of 10. The IndyCar guys with the open wheels don't like that much, so that's why we've got this little different configuration here. Yeah, it's really changed the character of this racetrack, I believe. I'm not sure it's for the better. Certainly a lot safer, but talking to the drivers, I think they love the old layout, but safety is obviously the number one concern these days. Here comes Long. One more corner. Hand out the window. He has done it, and he has gained more points exactly what he wants as he said he's nervous going into the last two tracks we'll talk about that later as the checkered waves there is the true speed team tyler tadovic and the gang really celebrating right now and pat long his third win of the season and just another superb drive here in a track now let's take a look in touring car here comes lawson aschenbach through turn 10 that cup is 360 honda civic he too is going to balloon his points lead just a little bit with povoleto parked so Aschenbach coming around and is at the same time just going to pick up another win. What a great story. The 06 GT champion comes into Touring Car and has this kind of a race. This kid is immensely talented, to be sure. Yeah, he's got superb talent and having a great championship run. One of those beautiful years you dream about. And right now, our GTS leader looks like Petey's going to get the job done and get his first win on the season. Boy, long-awaited and hard-earned for this real-time crew. They've done a great job, and as he does, bring that car through. By the way, with Lawson, something to mention here, in Thursday practice, he blew a motor. They got that card swapped out and got him back in. Let's take a look at our results. Long, O'Connell and Skeen, your overall podium. Pilgrim and Crescentini, great drive by Dino up into fifth. Then you take a look at the uh, next group. Here from 11th on back, you got Morgan and Steve Ruiz, Petey Cunningham winning in GTS over Brown, Leia Foge, Crosland, and Adams. You can see Foss struggling now with points with his incident, and it was breaks, is the report, by the way. Then Aschenbach over Tristan Herbert. A huge story there 
And Patrick Sagan getting his second podium of the season. A great story. Christian Herbert, that is an underfunded team as you take a look at the rest of the uh, program here in terms of the remaining of the 38 entries. Now let's take a look at our Sunoco Hard Charger Award, and it goes to Rob Holland in that second of the Capex entries. A little damage on the back of the car. He started 35th, ends up 26th, nine spots overall he made up. And this is against a tough field, and you can see some of the moves. He had to go three wide spots, Cal. He has a great run for him, fourth spot in class, and then finally putting a smile on the Capex boys' faces. Hey, absolutely, Alex Figgy struggling with brakes. He didn't finish either at this point, so a tough day for them. When we come back, we'll talk to our winners. Welcome back to the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma, where we have completed round one of the two races here this weekend, and it was certainly a great day for that man. Pat Long takes his third win of the year, gets congratulations from Johnny O. As he crosses the stripe, he points to his team, True Speed, who did a tremendous job here this weekend. Greg is down there catching up with our winner for the third time this year. Well, Pat Long, quick everywhere today. You're talking about a car that's carrying a lot of rewards weight. You're in traffic. you got a car with a lot of V8 torque behind you. You were masterful out there. What was allowing you to do that? It was brilliant. Well, this was really street course racing today. The IndyCar layout here at Sonoma is very, very tight. And with that, it kind of plays into the 911's hand as far as being agile and efficient. That's what we breed for selling on the road, and that's what we like to put on the racetrack as well. Uh, Johnny was really tough. He kept me honest, and it's a pleasure running with him. He was so strong in the beginning, and I just knew that I had to get to a longer run and hope that there weren't too many yellows so that we could really show that our brakes would last and our downforce would hold us in the corners. But surely he was keeping me honest, and uh, I think the Touring Car and GTS guys did a hell of a job uh, with traffic. They were in a really tough race and I just have a lot of respect for those guys and how they all race in this series. Well with that win as we look at the GT driver standings presented by Volvo, Pat Long extends his lead. Johnny O'Connell now in second spot, Zafronis third, Skeen and Pilgrim round out the top five. In the manufacturer standings is Porsche Rover Cadillac, Volvo and Nissan follow in fourth spot. Now the Cadillac CTS-V move of the race was Randy Post starting from the second row, splits the front row starters and immediately takes the lead for the first four laps of this run. Unfortunately for Randy, that success was not to last as he had electrical gremlins. And in GTS, finally, P.D. Cunningham gets his first win of 2011. Greg catches up with the guy who extends his win record. Well, P.D. Cunningham, race one done here at Infineon Raceway, and I guess the only thing we can say is finally, huh? You bet, yeah. This is the first <laughs> win of the year for an Acura and GTS and World Challenge, and uh, very proud of the guys. Uh, you know, it's tough racing these uh, higher horsepower cars out there, but, you know, we have our strengths, they have their strengths, so it, it just worked out for us today. Couldn't have done it without Redline Oil, Eibach, HPD, Acura. I mean, these real-time guys, so I'm very pleased. All right, well, great drive as always from uh, P.D. Cunningham. 41st win. You finally get out of that 40. The GTS driver standings presented by Volvo. Paul Brown continues to lead. Eric Foss in second. P.D. Cunningham, though, getting very close to the win here today. Ben Crosland and Brad Adams round out the top five. And in the manufacturer standings, it's Ford who have the strength in numbers and continues to lead over Acura in second. In touring car, Lawson Oschenbach had the perfect weekend winning from pole, his fourth win on the year. He shares his thoughts with Greg. Lawson, they call it Sports Car Wars, and in touring car today it was a great battle. You eventually looked like you were able to gap things a little bit. Yeah, you know, we had a great car. I got to say hats off to Compass 360 Racing, Honda Racing, HPD. The Civic was flying all weekend. To get the pole and the win, very happy about that. We also got to thank our other sponsors, OMP, Pelodi, of course, the car care and Hartman Luggage, and all the fans. I mean, this is a great Pirelli World Challenge Series and, and a great race for the fans. We're very happy to give them a good show. And points. Absolutely. Uh, good, good points day for us. And, uh, you know, it's not always. Still got three races to go. Anything can happen. And uh, we just got to, you know, be smart, keep it on the track, keep our wheels under it, and uh, hopefully uh, take another one here soon. Looking at the touring car driving standings presented by Volvo. Lawson Eichenbach spreads that lead over Aaron Pavolito, who didn't finish here today. Rob Holland in third. Herbert and Zitzer round out the top five. And in the manufacturer's standings, it's Honda on top over Volvo and Volkswagen in third. Now another big award every weekend is the Manufacturers Fan Championship and this weekend it goes to Nissan. Remember Tony Rivera making debut with a 370Z in the GTS class today, putting on quite a show for all of these folks who showed up here at Infineon Raceway. A great day of racing here for round nine of the championship and the fastest laps that the drivers turned in the race today will set the grid for round 10, which is coming up next.
We are very happy to welcome you back to the Infineon Raceway in the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma. This time for round 10 of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships. One of the very special things about this championship, we talk about how fan-friendly it is. This is the march to the grid where family members, friends, and just plain fans can come out and walk amongst these phenomenal cars right on the grid, talk to the drivers, introduce the young fan, maybe get an autograph, and at the same time, set the stage for some great excitement. Speaking of which, points battles. In the GT class, Pat Long now with Johnny O'Connell, great run yesterday in the ninth round up into second, and Sophronis in third. There is Pat. The interesting thing is, Cal, 130 points for a win, so it's still on. It really is, and Johnny O'Connell had a big weekend here, leapfrogging over James Sofronis into second place in points. He'd love to hang on to that. Realistically, Pat Long, if he continues to finish, should clinch this championship, but anything can happen with three rounds to go. Absolutely. Now, as we pan back through the field, we're going to take a look at the GTS division, and by virtue of his fastest lap in the race yesterday, 18-year-old Ben Croslin will start on pole here in the inner bank, number 25, but... You can see back to his left there is Paul Brown, your points leader. Eric Foss with his DNF yesterday lost a lot of ground. Petey Cunningham with that great win closed it up a little bit. Annie and Touring Car, Aschenbach, same story with Povoleto struggling. Even at 130 points, Povoleto's in trouble. Yeah, same thing in both GTS and Touring Car. The guys in second spot had big problems in the first race here in Finion, so it really has spread the gap there at the top of the pack. And at the top of the pack is Pat Long in terms of the overall pull. He's buckled in. There's the Nissan Leaf safety car, that remarkably innovative vehicle. Let's welcome once again Jim Verpolette for those special words. On behalf of our friends at Optima Batteries and all of our Cadillac dealers and employees worldwide, welcome to the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma. Drivers, start your engines! And the engines come to life. You can see the starting grid scrolling across the top of the screen. Look for your favorite driver there as Pat Long leads those two beautiful Cadillacs and the rest of the field away from the grid. Mike Skeen a little slow to get away. Well, he is struggling to get moving. There he goes. Okay. And his teammate, Pat, uh, uh, Pat Lindsay, right alongside in that White Hawk performance. Corvette, everybody is moving at this point, so we are getting ready to go. And again, all of these grid spots were set by the fastest laps with the, that were attained in the first race here yesterday. So Pat Long deems the pole by getting the fast lap yesterday. Randy Post up on the second row, even though he DNF'd, still had a pretty fast lap in the race. And, you know, we've got a great media partner, Grassroots Motorsports, and their website, grassrootmotorsports.com, always does an inside look segment that is part of our broadcast where you go online. This week's segment is on engine development. This is a stock production-based series. So what do you do? What can you do? Well, they're going to tell you. Cal, what do you do with this track? Well, it's newly reconfigured. It's still 12 turns, just over two and a quarter miles as we take a look at that track map. Now, as you follow the red line, the track remains the same all the way to turn seven. 7A is a little bit different, but the big changes are at nine and the run between 10 and 11 has been shortened as you can see. Now yesterday we saw big passing opportunities down at 7 and into the hairpin at turn 11 so we expect the same action there today. And woo, this is an issue for Mike Skeen, one of the players in the points in that Krager Corvette. We're getting a report. He radioed in some sort of clutch issue, so they're looking at that, and he is limping into pit lane. How about that race keeper quad box? Well, Eric Foss will start off ninth in GTS because of that problem early in the race yesterday. Then we're on board with Rob Morgan. He'll start the true speed Porsche. Looking out the front of him, you can see he's got some work to do today. Then Tony Gables in the Black Dog Chevrolet, and Tommy Dreesey had a great qualifying run yesterday. Can he do better today than the eighth spot he finished in the first race here at Infineon. All right, round 10, about to get with it. There's the five-second board again from Kathy Malik. It is long up front. Alongside Andy Pilgrim, though, his best qualifying effort of the year. Watch for the wheel and lights to go out. Round 10 is underway. Oh, Pilgrim slow to get away. Post another trademark start, but this time, Cal, long able to make it work, and that was a little bit of help from Pilgrim. Yeah, I mean, Post went to the outside, which cost him a little bit of time, and now look at the caddies. They're fighting back. <laughs> Post initially was second. Now he's dropped to fourth. Meanwhile, Long has the superb start and has about six car lengths heading down into turn three. And James Safron is able to hang on to fifth. That's important in terms of points. Alex Figgy, who struggled uh, in round nine with brake issues, and a much better start today for Courtney in that Kenda Tire wreck stuff Porsche as he is able to slot just Ooh, a gets bump, a but big there's a bump there. there. <laughs> Walsh in that Ferrari got clobbered there, going down into turn four. 
Lost a bit of ground. Can he retaliate now down into the carousel? Welcome to World Challenge Sports Car Wars, man. It is, oh, a piece of body work and flying off that Porsche that he got clocked by. That was Steven Ruiz Jr. So, boy, lots of developments here in the early going. And right behind Welch in that all-blue Porsche is Jason Carter in that uh, Loctite Racing for Our Heroes Porsche as well. Meanwhile, up at the front, it is Long who uh, holds the lead. And then those two caddies. Then Sophronis is now up into fourth. Boy, he's doing whatever he can. Yeah, Post has dropped another spot, which I don't really understand because uh, now we're on board here. We're going to look. Oh, you see Ooh. Ruiz there in turn seven. Takes a quick spin as Welsh and the rest of the field go through. Yeah, maybe when he and that uh, Ferrari got together, maybe he broke something. Meanwhile, on board with Nick Asayan, the number 34 real-time HPD Ibox Springs Redline Oil Acura in the GTS Look Crescentini oh, down to the nice. inside. Takes away another spot, so Post falls further back. Look at the debris flying there up against the pit wall. And Lindsay working around Pope, so boy, Pope's travails continue as uh, he is struggling oh, once smoke again. Oh, smoke on Lindsay's yeah. car. Ah. As he loaded up the right side there, going through that fast sweeper. Wonder if he's got a bit of tire rub on his bodywork from an earlier incident. Boy, so Randy has just plummeted down the order at this stage. Pat Lindsay, that hot performance Corvette. And then right behind Popes now is Tommy Dreesey, who is having an exceptionally strong weekend. He looked good at Mid-Ohio, but a superb one here. But Eric Foss, again, the Optimum Battery's best standing start. Got it for round nine, gets it here. Again, making up a quick five spots on this start. Well, he has got that absolutely dialed, doesn't he? He does. He went to the outside yesterday. He went to the inside today. But meanwhile, we've got a new touring car leader. Aaron Pavolito has rebounded from that disappointment yesterday and takes the lead. See how he does it on board with Aschenbach and just flat got out dragged down into turn one. And I think there's a bit of red miss with Povoleto after getting nothing yesterday and dropping out early. He is one determined guy. And make no mistake, Aaron Povoleto is fast. He is really fast. He and Oshenbach have really set the tone in touring car this year, and particularly here this weekend. So they run one, two in points. And even though he didn't finish yesterday, remember the grid is set by your fastest laps. And he had the fa second fastest lap of the race behind Oshenbach before he dropped out. And you can see these touring cars around this tight, twisty circuit are very nimble, and they get through some of these corners quickly. Meanwhile, in GTS, there is Paul Brown, who has leapfrogged pole sitter Crossland and has gone to the point. Cunningham slots into third at this point. So early in the going, let's take a look at our class leaders. In GT, it is Long, Pilgrim, O'Connell, and Sophronis. In GTS, Brown, Crosland, Cunningham, and Rivera. Great start. And in touring car, it's Povoleto, Aschenbach, Holland, and Brett Sandberg. Patrick Long continues to lead overall here in the 10th round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships at the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma in that beautiful Privacy Star Porsche from True Speed Motorsports. Coming up on some lap traffic, Tony Rivera in that beautiful silver GTS Nissan is going to be his next target as he swoops around this track, working his way up through the pack and, uh, again, making hay while the sun shines. We, we alluded to it when we were talking about the, uh, the coverage in that, uh, in that ninth round, Cal. The next round of the championship is at Laguna. Not a particularly friendly track for a underpowered handling car, if you will. Same with Road Atlanta for the finale. This is go time. It really is, and I think Patrick also recognized the fact he's pretty much maxed out with these rewards weights, the weight that gets put on the car when you have success. A lot of the other competition have continued to attain weight as well, so the gap is actually getting smaller. He thinks that'll be an advantage, so maybe that'll come into play as well in the final couple of races. And he's so good at working traffic. He's so good at managing tires and brakes with that weight. Uh, he really is the real deal. Uh, the man's got the gift. Now, another guy who's got the gift but has been struggling as of late is Randy Popst, and uh, he is falling back through the order just a little bit. But one of the very cool things about this Capex Volvo program is there is a very direct connection between the car that's being raced on the track and the street car that it's modeled after. And Randy talked about that. The genesis of every race car in the World Challenge GT Series is a production car. In the case of Capex, it's the Volvo S60 R design. The new R design that we're driving now, it's a step towards that race car. A little lower, a little firmer, a little sportier, a little more powerful, and uh, just a little more performance of what was already a great performing car, the, the Volvo D6. The new R design has cranked up to 350 pound feet of torque. 
and the engine's a turbocharged six. Doesn't feel like a turbo. There is zero lag. I'm telling you, it feels like a big block V8, in my opinion. The power is just right there, and the R design just cranks it up more. The new S60 R design handles even better than ever. It's faster than ever on the roads here in Napa Valley. But you know what? The one that's really my favorite Volvo to drive is the K-Pax Racing S60. I hope the Napa Valley police weren't listening to that comment, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, he's certainly having some fun. And, you know, while they're struggling, obviously, and, you know, maybe those electrical gremlins have come back for him, in touring car, k and a Volvo doing pretty well. Yeah, Pal Valedo continues to lead here, and he really needs to maximize his points here to stand any chance of eating into that Oschenbach lead. But Oschenbach will be pretty happy here. Big win yesterday, running second in the race today. That will be another big points day for him. And uh, he's won championships before, Greg. He knows how to get the job done. Well, obviously you want to win, but if it's going to wall you trying to get to the front and take away all the points, better to finish second and live to fight another day, and, and you're right, Aschenbach gets it. Yeah, I think Pavlato would actually have preferred a little bit of a dust-up, and maybe he could have uh, created an incident for Aschenbach, but Aschenbach is sitting there in second and looks strong. Meanwhile, in GTS, Ben Croslin has slipped behind Paul Brown. Now you can see Ben hanging the back end out of that yellow interbank Mustang, trying to stay with Paul Brown's one-hour heating and air conditioning. K&N Lucas entry as Pat Long comes up and underneath in the Privacy Star Porsche, working through traffic here and uh, doing it very adeptly. But I'll tell you what, Paul Brown, this is such a great story. They literally, they the prize money they get helps them get to each race. He continues to try and find a little bit of sponsor money. And yet the guy, he has more front row starts, more wins. It has just been an amazing season for Paul in a really small, underfunded team. Well, that prize money's been pretty big. He won three races in a row, finished second here yesterday and leads today. So that prize fund is certainly adding to his uh, sponsorship pile of money <laughs> which he needs and you can see again folks why we call the sports car wars brown working around one of the touring cars patrick again and right in the mix of it here comes a swarm of the gt machinery trying to get through and you can see it with uh, tommy or excuse me i think that was dino crescentini. crescentini got hung up just for a little bit had to dynamite those stop tech brakes he's happy he's got those Yes, yeah, certainly those GMG Porsches will look very strong here. But Andy Pilgrim runs second. This is his best run of the year. We saw O'Connell have the pole here yesterday and finish second. But Andy kind of been sitting behind Johnny a little bit in points all season long. But he is an ex-World Challenge champion, and he'd love to get another win here this year. By the way, there's the number 41. That's Steven Ruiz. car looks very similar to Dino's, but he is struggling. He's got some issues and is down a little bit. You can see doing a nice job, the young rookie. I think this is only his third start. He's just getting out of the way, very uh, savvy and watching the flaggers and those blue flags, knowing he's got traffic coming. But uh, great development this season. Obviously, when the caddies came in after how impressive they were the first time they showed up in 04, actually 03, SCCA made sure that they were reeling them in a little bit. They've been throwing a little bit more out to them. But those caddy engineers and that great team have really worked on the handling of these cars, and boy, have they been impressive. Well, that's one thing that the series has to be so careful with. You have so many great privateer teams, and when a big manufacturer like GM and Cadillac come into the series, you don't want to scare everyone away. So I think they've really just walked a very fine line here in managing how strong they're going to be. And certainly Johnny and Andy have been very competitive this year, but they haven't come in and knocked everyone out of the ballpark. Here's your battle for third, and it is two Global Motorsports Group Porsches, the blue one of Global Motorsports Group team principal, James Sofronis, uh, who came in here second in points, has dropped back a little bit, and Dino Crescentini in the Stop Tech car chasing him. Let's take a look at how things look in each of the classes right now. Your leader overall, and in GT, is Pat Long. In GTS, it's Paul Brown. And in touring car, it's Aaron Povaleto. The Pirelli World Challenge Championships are brought to you today by Sunoco, the official fuel of over 40 series of driving, racing, and winning. By the Cadillac V-Series, the 556 horsepower CTS V Coupe sedan and wagon, the world's fastest family of cars. And by Pirelli, for power is nothing without control. Now, it's been an eventful 10th round of the Pirelli World Challenge here at the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma. Let's take a look back. There you see Nick Asayan almost getting high-sided as Steven Ruiz, the young rookie, spins in front of them. Later, a couple of laps later on, he can't get that braking zone for turn seven down quite right. And then, Cal, bit of a moment here. Some great racing between Ben Croslin and young Alec Udell, but it changes for Udell. Yeah, it does. I wonder if he slowed down a little bit here because Welsh gets into the side of him, and just a few moments later, Udell peels off to the side of the road. And then, shades of mid-Ohio, Lindsay down underneath Johnny O'Connell, and around O'Connell goes. 
No love lost between those two guys at the moment, that's for sure. And that brings us to current. And we have nine laps to go, and Patrick Long doing exactly what he wants to do and what Patrick Long does rather well, and that's lead in a Porsche as he drops through the legendary carousel here at uh, Infineon Raceway. Pilgrim's not letting him go, though. He's staying within touching distance here, so... Patrick has to be very careful. You get a bunch of traffic around this racetrack, particularly through this section, you can really lose a couple of seconds very, very quickly. That's Tommy Dreesy right behind Aaron Povoleto. You just see Povoleto give him the point now. He says, I had to get through that section of track. But Dreesy, I think, thought he was more clear than he was and moved a little bit left to set up for that turn. Yeah, in the brake zone, these cars are going to really have the same sort of performance, and I don't think Tommy really gave him enough room there on the outside of the road. Povoleto had nowhere to go. That was a close moment. Hopefully no damage to either race car. Yeah, and Povoleto had pointed him by, so I think he was then probably, no doubt, quite surprised at what happened. But it looks like they both got away with it. By the way, folks, if you're into fantasy sports and fantasy league stuff, well, you can do that with World Challenge as well by visiting world-challenge.com slash fantasy league. It's presented by the Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving. If you join the league today for your chance at a four-day Bondurant Racing School program is valued at 5000 bucks. You can do a little racing of your own, not fantasy style, behind the real wheel. Povoleto up on that wheel right now doing a nice job at this point. Yeah, he's totally in command of this Volvo right there. You can see him sliding it through that corner there, turn three. Really great part of the racetrack here. You have the elevation change coming down through turn four. Very tricky corner. The road falls away from you. got to hang on to it. And then big up and over the hill down into the carousel. This is a tremendous part of the racetrack which hasn't been changed. Really the original configuration here at Infineon. And great to see. There goes Jason Carter and the Loctite racing for our heroes Porsche. There is Lawson Aschenbach. So you can see Povoleto has opened up a pretty stout margin over Lawson at this point. And I wonder if some of that, certainly Povoleto is going wicked quick, but if, if Lawson isn't going, don't race with him. Don't risk throwing his car off the track. Get points. Yeah, take your time. Take your time in traffic. He's using the mirror as well. There's some faster traffic coming through right now. So he's just going to be careful. He recognizes this is a huge, huge weekend with only two rounds to go. Just bring it home. The championship is almost clinched. And some great racing there is, again, a look at Dave Welch in that Ferrari 430, the numerics entry. This is a huge battle for eighth right now. Figgy, Morgan. And Welch right there as well coming through. That is Scott Cooney. That is the GTS board. Oh, and they get bubbled oh, up there. Three abreast on the contact. Morgan, this is in turn 10, really high-speed part of the racetrack. He manages to keep it together. Just that silver Porsche got all of those fast GT cars bottled up there. There was not enough room for everyone. Figgy slowed to the inside. And that created a little bit of a... Concertina effect here. There you see Figgy to the outside. He doesn't get going. Morgan tries to go for the gap, gets clipped, and he's off in the dust. Yeah, that was a nice save by Morgan, too. Not a lot of runoff, as you see at turn 10. And he gathers it back up. Meanwhile, the war in GTS continues. Look at Ben Croslin. He gets to the outside of Brown. Now the question is, can he make that stick? Well, Brown, no. Now Croslin cuts down underneath. Oh, Cal, did he get a drive off that corner? He really did. It's going to be side by side down this front straightaway. But now Paul Brown has the inside line for the upcoming corner. Who's got the confidence in the grip? Well, I think Croslin said, oh, well, that's why there's a car up front. And that is Brett Sandberg, who since he joined the Compass 360 team has had a great run of podiums. And it all goes away at this one. Smoke pouring from that car. And he is parked, at, or going to be at this point. His day is done. So lots of action, and certainly this GTS battle continues to be superb. Best one on the track of the three classes. Speaking of which, the current order in our three classes in GT. It's long over Pilgrim, O'Connell, and Sophronis in the GTS division. Brown, Croslin, Leofoge again, and Cunningham, and Turing Car, Povoleto, Aschenbach, Herbert, and Mason. At the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma, closing in on the conclusion of the 10th round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships. And Pat Long now has uh, found himself in some traffic, and Andy Pilgrim has come right back onto his tail, keeping it very close here. And James Safron is not that far behind, and they're getting into some traffic that is not going to just give way. At this point, again, Crosland sideways through that section of track, trying to stay with Brown, the yellow and the white Mustangs. That does, though, give Long the opportunity, and that's what Long wanted as Crosland shuts the door on Pilgrim and gets that little bit of a breather. It's that close. It really is, and it's really tough for the overall leader when he comes 
up against a battle in class because these guys are looking in their rearview mirrors, looking at them there as competitors. Here we see Crosland. They're almost getting into the side of Sophronis, trying to make room around this hairpin. Gets a good run there. Crosland really gets the hammer down. Brown very slow off the hairpin turn. Well, I think that Brown was maybe, you know, looking at those GT cars, tightened up his exit, Cal. That tightens the radius up, and Crosland just let it buck, didn't he? Oh, Brown <laughs> looks to the inside there. That is hairy, hairy stuff. A touch at that point on the racetrack. You're go both going to go for a ride, but Crosland hangs on to this lead in GTS. Very close indeed, but a great move by Ben Crosland. Superb pass in that yellow inner bank. Mustang, that's the race with HP.com. Ford Mustang program that he's put together and of course then Brown in that uh, again the one hour heating and air conditioning cars this has been a great duel for the entirety of this one in touring car not quite so close Aaron Povoleto has pretty much ruled the day from the get go yeah he's got a commanding lead now of Aschenbach so it'll be a good points day for him but again for our points leader Aschenbach a second place run I'm sure if you told him before the weekend started a win and a second place he'd have taken it quite nicely thank you but in GTS, that battle is going to be intense there with Paul Brand going after that youngster, Crosland, Greg. He's had a win this year. Can he make it too? It's going to be fun to watch. Oh, a bit of lockup right there from the Cadillac as it goes knifing through. That's, uh, again, Andy Pilgrim, and he is trying everything he can to uh, try and stay with and even run down Pat Long as we have two laps to go. Here comes Ooh, James Sofronis. Andy there lock locking up. up a wheel there, I think, down into the hairpin. He's pushing hard. He realizes time is running out. One lap to go, running out indeed, as you call it. And uh, But those two little bits of lockup and some traffic, Long now finds himself with that little bit of breathing room as he starts this final lap. And uh, but what a remarkable story Pat Long has been as he comes in his first full season. I think he only ran one World Challenge race prior to this year. And uh, to have him come in with a team like uh, True Speed, and they obviously, Tyler Tadovic and the gang there, have given all of their drivers superb equipment. They have, and there you see the weight on his windshield, plus <laughs> yeah. 200 rewards weight. That is a massive amount on this race car. They did lose 50 pounds on the Porsche for this weekend, so that helps. But even so, he's got a lot of car and a lot of weight there to deal with around this tight and twisty racetrack. And you manage that weight. You earn it by having success. They call it rewards weight, or success ballast is another way that a lot of people refer to it. And he has earned it because he's had a great season. There is Pilgrim. There is Sophronis. But one thing that uh, I've noticed in the back of the picture a couple of times, Tommy Dreesey is taking a run at Johnny O'Connell. Uh, and O'Connell did have that spin, but still, Tommy Dreesey, uh, the third of the true speed drivers, along with Logan Morgan, is having himself a superb weekend. He really is, and it's not only a good weekend, a good season. He's also running in the ALMS. He's had a win in the LMPC class at Mid-Ohio and just really going from strength to strength since he switched over to the True Speed team. Yeah, he really has. And you see right behind Pat Long right there, you see Brandon Peterson, the number 64 of Swift Sprints Competition Clutch Honda, run yesterday by Charlie Solomon. And Brandon is on his way to a top five, racing just the one race and starting dead last in his class. But leading from the get-go, here he comes, earning win number four on the season. Pat Long, and there's that True Speed crew. Look at him just absolutely ecstatic down there as he gets the points he needs again. Just an amazing run. Speaking of amazing run, Ben Crosland, that outside pass, and he ends up getting his second win of the season to go along with his win in Utah. And right behind him comes Pavaleto, who picks up another win for himself and that Capex team in their first season of running a touring car with that C30 Volvo. Just a great story for, really, all of the classes, all of the winners, and uh, Pat Long with all of that reward. Weight, uh, making it work once again just remarkable now of course one of our big awards as always is the Sunoco Hard Charger Award this one goes to Ray Mason in the Compass 360 Racing Honda and uh, he's had himself a good season when he's run with us and watch that start as he just launches and Ben Crosland doing a little bit of celebrating we'll celebrate with him when we come back Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships have been brought to you by Volvo Volvo for life and by StopTech, world-class brake components and systems for high-performance vehicles on the street and track. And by the Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving, internationally recognized as the leading authority on driver training. And they've trained some great ones, certainly, and we've had some great ones here at the Cadillac Grand Prix of Sonoma. Look at this broom, the sweep, Tyler Tadovic going, <laughs> sweep time! And Pat Long did just that fast lap, pole, and win. In this one, that doesn't happen very often. That is a very, very special moment. Let's take a look at the unofficial results. And as you can see, it is Pat Long with the overall win. Pilgrim is best finish of the season. Sophronis getting back on the podium. Lindsay and Dreesey caught O'Connell for fifth. 
great drive and a great weekend. Dave Welk doing a nice job in the Ferrari. Then you go back, you take a look at the GTS. 16th overall, your winner, Ben Croslin. The 18-year-old gets his second win over Paul Brown and Greg Leofos. Peter Cunningham with the win yesterday, fourth today. And in touring car, 25th overall, Povoleto makes up for those issues yesterday. He was not to be denied. Oshenbach, Tristan Herbert, who hauled out here for that team with an open trailer, last-minute decision, determined to come and run, and ends up with two podiums. Pretty good weekend and a great story there to be sure. So that's a look at the results. Here is a look at the activity down in Victory Circle. And Dan Lacey is making his way down there. He'll be bringing us those interviews. Let's take a quick look, though, as we watch Pat Long come by and that True Speed crew celebrating. Now it's time to get down to Dan with Pat. Fantastic effort. Just seemed like he had everything totally under control. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, at the end, Andy kept me honest. Uh, that was a little bit closer than I wanted. It's been a long weekend, and uh, there was a lot of grip on the track, so I pushed pretty hard in the beginning, and I was just trying to save my stuff for the end, and luckily I had a little bit left because the traffic, they were in their own battle, and I had to be really weary of that, and Andy kept me honest. I could see Jer James lurking back there, but uh, for True Speed, a perfect weekend, and it's always great to be back here in California. Well, with his second win of the weekend, Pat Long extends his lead in the GT driver standings presented by Volvo. Jimmy Sephoris jumps up to second with that podium run. Johnny O'Connell close by in third. In the manufacturer's standings, well, it's Porsche over Cadillac. Volvo and Nissan follow in third and fourth. Now let's take a look at touring car. Aaron Povoleto getting the job done beautifully. He's with Dan Lacey. Great run here. Great battle throughout the field. Uh, I gotta tell you, what an intense day, all day long, with the pressure I had from behind. The Honda behind me was so strong in some areas, I was a lot stronger in other areas. It was a real sort of tit for tat there, but I tell you, the development work that's never ending, K-Pax Racing, Volvo C30, what an amazing platform to build a race car out of, and I tell you, it keeps making my job more and more fun. Taking a look at the touring car driver standings presented by Volvo with that third win of the year. Aaron Povolito closes slightly on Lawson Aschenbach, but he's looking very comfortable up front. Holland in third, Herbert and Mason round out the top five. In the manufacturers, it's Honda over Volvo and Volkswagen in third. And now let's take a look at the GTS battle. And there's Ben Croslin coming by and into victory circle. You're making a dangerous mark here in the Pirelli World Challenge by saying, I don't care how old you are, I'm a punk kid, I'm going to beat you up on the racetrack. Nice job. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just kind of going out with a bang, and, uh, man, the, the car is so much better today, and I had a great run with Paul Brown, you know, uh, had a good start, and then he, I think he had the setup at the start, but then at, towards the end, I, th I think I had him, and it was just a great clean race between me and Paul, and it was just great, and everything held up, and no crashes, so it was good. The GTS driver standings presented by Volvo. Paul Brown continues to lead, but Ben Crosland with that huge win leapfrogs Eric Foss to second. Cunningham and Adams fourth and fifth in the standings. And in the manufacturer's standings, it's Ford with 91 points over Acura in second with 48. Now time to take a look at our Cadillac CTSV move of the race, and this one was easy. Two laps to go. Ben Crosland around the outside of Paul Brown for the lead and the win. Well, Cal, the Pirelli World Challenge Championship is very fan-friendly. And for the Manufacturers Fan Championship in the 10th round, it was the fans from Cadillac that came out in droves. And look at that. Boy, all of them sport the T-shirts and love of the moment as we wrap up round 10 of the Pirelli World Challenge Championship. Our next broadcast, we'll have rounds 11 and 12 from Laguna and Rhode Atlanta, respectively. Congrats to all our winners. And to Paul Brown, you got punk, buddy.